Hey guys, Sustrickle Waza here. Welcome back to another weekly stream where, yes, we're going to be covering all the important information this week. We've got loads to cover. We've got obviously the newsletter. We're going to go through in depth as always. We're going to go through a bit about missions. We talked about it in our previous stream and give it a lowdown. We're going to have a look at that. Um, we've got obviously Ability 11. So we've got Skylinks, we've got Slash, we've got Ultra Magnus, Sunstreaker, Galvatron. Blitzwing, the whole ability level to show as well. Excited for that. That's been coming for weeks now. Been put back and put back. It's finally here. <clears throat> then we've got something that not everyone might have realised. Something happened in the game today. Bit of a mystery, but you'll find out later on. Uh, and yeah, so quite a bit to go through. Obviously, like I said, Will and Sea Phantom, the new bots out uh, coming this weekend. The big question is. Big chance event, 1.5 million points. Are they worth it? And we'll be talking a bit about that as well. So, obviously, at first, I need to apologise for last week's stream. Uh, I'll explain shortly what happened, explain what I've been doing this week uh, in my real life, which affected it, and things like that. And uh, we'll talk a bit about what I've been doing in the game this week as well. <clears throat> and then uh, we'll get into the stream. So, first of all, as always, let's see who we've got in the chat. So, Penny Lancaster was first. Welcome to the stream. And we've got Chris Harmon. Uh, you were second. Not first. Sorry, bud. Uh, SG Soundwave. Uh, yes, it has been a while, like I said, because of last week. Apologies. Uh, and obviously, thank you to Chris Harmon and for Rescue and for SG Soundwave for being members. And hence, hey, Rescue as well. Uh, William Wilkinson. We've got Bricks Motion. Uh, we've got uh, Matt Poley as well. Thanks for joining, guys. Uh, we've got Luke. Love our members. Hey, how's it going? Uh, we've got... What have we got? Paul Waits, Garrett, my good friend, <clears throat> S. Clohose. I hope I got that right, honestly, I do. Uh, OS73, Lord Avix. Uh, we've got William Childbury. Uh, who else have we got? 010. Very strange name. I hope that's not your real name. Uh, we've got Stay Puff, my buddy. Action Whale as well. Thanks for joining. Autobot Phil, as always, as well. A uh, lot of familiar faces. Carnage McKite. I love saying that name. I really do. Uh, we've got uh, Raja Han as well. Thanks for joining. And thanks for the heads up. We'll talk a bit more about that later, like we said. Uh, MIA Philly as well. Cheers for joining. Uh, who else have we got? Have I missed anyone else? Super Scott, Voodoo Ride, Richard Trindler. Uh, hey, and Johnny, my friend Johnny Stash. Um, Johnny Stash is basically a good friend of mine. Uh, I've been around today talking about streaming, trying to get him into streaming. He does uh, a lot of Daisy uh, gaming, but um, trying to get him into it. But we'll see. But yeah, thanks everyone for joining. So, real life, what we've been doing. So, obviously, been waiting for Stability 11, been waiting for the new. Things to come, been put back from last week. I was all ready for it. Uh, for those that follow the channel, know that I've been leveling my five star slash recently, getting slash up, ready for stability 11. It was ready last week, didn't come, got put back a week, but today it's finally dropped. So the updates dropped. So, slash straight to ability 11. She's 61 11 now. She'll be going to 60. Four, hopefully this weekend, 65, bit of a stretch. Again, those who watch my channel know I'm not a favorite. You know, of maxing my bots out. I like to get them to level 64 and then just free to play at 65 because it's a big jump from 64 to 65 level. But that's what I've been doing. So, basically, in terms of last week's stream, so I was trying to do something uh, around the new bots and trying to do some testing, and I was trying to do uh, something else I got in the works. So I was asking Dale for these bots, and uh, the new wiki, long story short, is not the same as the old wiki, and uh, the old wiki got hacked. Uh, all the wiki got hacked. They're blaming Russia, but that's to be said. I ain't getting involved in that. I am blaming Russia. So, um, yeah, it got hacked completely. So I couldn't get any images off from my streams. Because, uh, you know, when I do these things with text and things like that, uh, I can't load them up. So I thought, I can't stream. Um, Dale can't give me the images. He's struggling a bit. I was struggling for little things. Um and I thought, right, okay, I can stream, but I could do a bit of gameplay, something like that instead. Not the best setup, but I can do that. So I started it all off, and my stream was wrong. My stream was just cut wrong. I don't know what happened, but the sound wasn't right. My camera wasn't working. Didn't have a clue what was going on. 
this is like 10 minutes before I start, supposed to start my stream. So I thought, right, I can't do this. I can't sort of leave it half an hour late and things like that. I've got to cancel the stream. Cancelled the stream, carried on working on it. But in about 20 minutes, got it right. But I was like, it's a, it's a bit gone now, so we'll leave it. Then later that night, I had a uh, text uh, with me to do the next batch of videos. The idea was we were doing, um, we're rating all the prime cores in the game. Uh, that's something we're going to be doing. And uh, looking at uh, rating all the bots on defense. That was something that we wanted to do. Wanted to do that. Couldn't get the images, like I said. So I said to him, we could do one of the videos. Again, set up to do the video. Sound not working, not coming through at all. Absolutely baffled. Sat there with half an hour of text trying to work it out. Couldn't work it out at all. So I put a thing um, in YouTube saying, "This thing, sorry guys for the stream. I'm going to post a video tonight, one of our old videos. Went back to look at one of my old videos. Went to load it up. And that was broken as well. The files are corrupt. Literally, I had a nightmare of a day. So I was like, I'm, I'm done with this. I had no videos to post because they're all corrupt. Couldn't get my camera working. Couldn't get the sound working. Absolute nightmare. So apologies for the last week. It has literally been, you know, a bit of a nightmare uh, up to last weekend. I finally got, got it sorted out. So we're back on it this week again. Back on as usual and streaming as normal. So apologies. So that's been my week pretty much. It's been a bit chaotic. Last week's event was a bit, you know, it was all right. I mean, it's great to finish the event within 10 minutes. But thanks to Spacey. But bit of a boring weekend but i suppose it gave me time to then meet up with tex again and we did get the videos done so we have done the healers video again rating all the healers we have rated all the gunner and air class on defense in outposts we've rated them uh we went through all the combiners we rated all them so all these videos are going to be coming over the next few weeks guys so again apologies for last week I had tons of technical problems but we've got it sorted finally i think is all good okay so let's crack on with the stream let's get on with the newsletter and we can go from there so bye week grana week ninny bong week five of the saga we've got a chance event this weekend kind of excited for it the we had the apes have had a bit of feedback about the uh about the event about chance events being a bit poor and They've tried to increase. They've tried to improve the event. They are trying to fair to them, but I don't think they quite hit the mark yet. Um, but we'll come to that shortly. So, rolling in the deep is this weekend's event. So we could get up to 150 deep crystals, each containing new world and sea phantom in those uh, crystals. Obviously, it's a chance event, not guaranteed. <clears throat> then we've got four star shards, three star shards, character shards, and they've actually missed that off on the description, but five star shards as well. That's the change. Now we've got five star shards in the event as well. So it has made it a bit better. Uh, up to 100 total spark crystals. That's immense. I can't wait for that. I really need those total spark crystals. It's also good because you can keep them in inventory, so you haven't got to use them. So that's why I love them as well. You can just keep them in your space bridge and not have to use them. <clears throat> up to 60 premium combat chips, a G1 G metal core chip, 3 G metal core chips, 10 gold core chips, and as always, and a partridge in a pear tree. But you don't get the partridge. No, you don't. But yeah, yo, pretty decent event. Pretty good. Yeah. Uh, one and a half million points. Quite hefty for most alliances, but there is some uh, good rewards in there. So it's the normal uh, points per uh, zone. <clears throat> and uh, the uh, rewards are spread throughout. Apologise for the uh, cough. I think I've got a bit of coal coming on. Uh, got it. So yeah, you can see there, total spark crystals, event crystals, every sort of uh, 750,000, 500,000, you get a decent amount of event crystals. So try and hit them marks. You know, if you're at 900k, try and get to that million. If you're at 650k, try and get to that 750k. You'll get some decent event crystals by hitting those marks. So if you can't hit 1.5 mil, set your target for maybe a 1 mil, 750,000, something like that, to get some decent event crystals in to get within a chance of getting them. So you get right up to 1.5 million. And at 1,480,000, you get 5 G1G metal power cores. 5. And I believe they confirmed that's right. <clears throat> it doesn't sound right. It's a lot. I hope it is. 
but we'll have to wait and see. So within the crystals, you've got a uh, 20% chance of premiums, 20% chance of three star shards, same four star shards, same five star shards, and world and sea phantom. Now that does not mean, guys, you've got a 20% chance of getting world and sea phantom. Don't forget that's 20% chance of getting four star, three star, five star, 100 shards, and world or sea phantom so there's still a chance within that so it's probably two or three percent in reality we know how these chance events go you know it is hard to get the bot <clears throat> but uh you know it is what it is it is one of those events chance event and then decent uh rewards within the uh total spark crystals i'll take them all day and then on to game updates and information so there's been a massive update push today there was a few bugs um so when they did push it uh, the new missions came. Yay! Finally, I've been waiting for this for weeks. Supposed to come last week. Again, put back to this week. <clears throat> but when they had did come, if you try purchasing the extra slots on the missions, uh, it basically crashed the game. So, But what you can do is work around. If you go into your alt faction and then purchase, the, um, purchase them there instead, it'll work for both factions still. But just a workaround that doesn't crash the game. So if you want to purchase the extra slots, guys, uh, within the missions, go to your old faction, purchase them there. You can still purchase them. Me personally, I haven't got them yet. I'm probably going to spend a bit this weekend leveling Slash. So I'm going to use some coins out of that rather than going buying coins and then buying a weekend. Um, do both uh, this week, basically. So, yeah. Uh, elimination mode change, so that should be live uh, as of this evening. Elimination mode is available all weekend. I wouldn't bother this weekend because it's a big event, but if you've got a quiet event next week or something like that with a 10, 15, 20k event and you're done, you could do some Zen farming. So, buzzing for that, really good. Uh, dialogue skip button, which we covered last week, really good with the uh, ability to replay the stories. Uh, super cool, but don't worry if there's no replay story button. Uh, it simply just means that that bot hasn't got one. Simply as that. <clears throat> um, then we've got confirmation dialogues. What's that got? Um, Oh, yes. So, basically, um, people have been using their tokens, their skip tokens for research, by accident, things like that, um, accidentally using them. So, they've put a confirmation button in, basically, which is a good fix, basically, to stop all the tickets going through and people complaining about it. Uh, obviously, we covered the crystal gifting last week. Uh, that should be uh, back and also gifting the Cyber Pass. Uh, that's pretty cool. I like that to be, uh, you know, to give incentives to your team. Super cool. Third research slot. Definitely need that. Me personally, uh, maybe, maybe I'm not. I might get it. Uh, but definitely, there's a lot of low-level players that definitely need this. And super pleased to come into the game. It's super cool for mid to low-level players. Can't wait. Uh, then, obviously, Dispatch Missions have come. We just spoke about that. Uh, personally, we, we'll talk a bit more about it in a bit. Uh, but, yeah, glad they're in the game. Then, obviously, we've got Whirl and Sea Phantom. We're going to cover them in the game shortly. We've got the uh, new Ability 11s for Skylinks, um, for Slash, for Sunstreaker, and, uh, obviously, Swindle, and Ultra Magnus and Galvatron. And Red Alert and Run Amok. Again, we'll cover that shortly. Give our opinion on that. Uh, we've got community cover. So, um, corner. Co uh, community corner. Uh, Furious has made this drawing. Um, not a clue. It looks like Bay Farmers. I ain't got a clue who that is. Sorry. Uh, then we've got a picture of Ratchet. We know it's Ratchet because it says Ratchet. So, yeah. Uh, then we've got a Minnesota picture. Got to be Menasaur. Got to be. And then the Saga schedule. So this time, they've posted uh, two schedules worth. So we're on uh, week five. And we've got the whole next schedule up and running. A bit strange. This is five weeks. The next one is four weeks. Very strange. Four, a four-week Saga? Does that mean they're going to reduce the Saga Pass? I don't know. Uh, but obviously we've got the uh, new bots and new crystals this event. Then we've got an individual event next week for 20k. An Alliance Totalizer for the anniversary event. Event Can't wait for that. They've announced that they're giving a 5 star combat away. Now don't worry guys. I know it says 1 million event. It will be a 1 million event. 
But normally when they do these anniversary events, those prizes are set quite low. And the idea is that people can finish that event and then they can go and help others. Now, the other events have been quite shorter than that. And my feedback will be that they need to reduce that from 1 million to maybe 750,000 or 500,000 to get more people getting those bots. Uh, but make sure, guys, listen, if you're in a lower level alliance and you don't think you're going to get to the point where you can get that five star, it's something like 5k per player last time it could be a bit more but 5 to 10k per player if you don't think you're going to get it join the transformers earth wars discord server and there's a section in there where you can put your alliance in there and say hey we need some help and all the whales once they're finished with the event they'll come and help you it was a great event last time real big community event everyone jumped in and helped everyone everyone jumped in did some points jumped out people were rotating in we got loads of people a five star bot we want to do the same again, get everyone a five-star combat. So don't forget, guys, if your alliance is not, you don't think you're going to reach that point and you've got a few spare spots, get in that Discord, get your name down, get the five-star combat. I've got a five-star combat pull that I'm going to pull after I've got that bot. I want to know what I'm going to pull first from that anniversary event. They've announced that it is only batches one to three. It's not including the current batch, which I want to pull from. But if I've got a better chance at getting flak, if I pull fire drive for batch one, then I'll go for flak. If I don't, if I pull flak, then I don't need batch one. I'm pretty much done. Uh, maybe lionizer at a push. Um, but if I pull from, you know, batch two or three, then I might actually pull from the current batch. Again, I'm a bit unsure. I'm a bit uneasy. But I want to find out what I'm getting there first. So that week's stream, after that event, we'll be doing two five star combat pulls so watch out for that and as always we have a bit of fun do some giveaways and uh yeah then we've got a prime core shard event after that after last week's prime core shard event can't wait for that hopefully it's just as long 10 minutes that will do and then uh we've got uh, an alliance totalizer event for new bots and new crystals for so one and a half million again so looking forward to those bots it'd be interesting then we've got some bug fixes and improvements. We've got a dive bomb uh, where you, we equipped the Cyber Pass skin uh, and it made um, it made uh, something go, go, just been hit by a moth or something. Um, and there's a moth flying around my head. <laughs> um, and yeah, the Cyber Pass skin uh, wasn't working properly, so they fixed that. Uh, the global chat has been reduced from HQ13 to HQ5. It was increased because of toxicity, but they've agreed there's a lot of new players that, that couldn't communicate with people, couldn't get any help. So they put it right down to 5, and we'll see how it goes. Uh, and Ultra Magnus and Galvatron, the ability damage to the main target is now... Go away. Uh, dealt consistently according to the tooltip. What is it? What is it, though? We'll see. And the ability cost has been reduced for, to 5 plus 3 plus 7 for, from 7 plus 3. So a lot better, uh, a lot uh, cheaper. So before we get into the game, I want to announce something. So we are currently on 3,963 subs. We are 37 subs short of 4,000. 37 subs short. If we can get to 4,000 subs by the end of the stream, I will give away 15 Sunstreak was a stash crystals randomly in the chat. Just to anyone that's commented. I'll scroll through and pick some random people out. I'll give 15 away in one stream live. But I need 37 subs. 37. Sounds a lot. But only half the people that watch my channel are actually even subbed. Only half of them. So if there's 50, 60 people in this chat watching the stream, chances are half of them are not even subbed. That's probably 30 people. So 37 people we can get 37 more subs in this stream. I will give away 15 Sunstreaker Water Stash Crystals tonight live in the stream. So if you're not subscribed already, guys, get subscribed. Get subscribed tonight. Let's try and hit that 4,000. Let's try and hit it. Okay. Let's jump into the game and get into the test account. And uh, yes, as always, we are on my test account. And as always, we need a test account disclaimer before we start. 
Test Server Disclaimer This is a test server account given to me by Spaceshape to be able to exclusively show new features. This is in no way connected to Global and all values are given to me by Spaceshape for testing purposes. To have access to a test account, you must be a playtester or content creator and to become a playtester or content creator, you must apply when applications are being taken. No, I am not a hacker and this is not my normal Global account. This has been your test server disclaimer. And uh, thank you, Grand Time. Quick drink. So today, I went a bit shopping, do a bit of bits and bobs, and uh, I seen something. I was like, I've got to get that. And that is root beer. I've not seen root beer in years. In years, I was like, I've got to get some. Got to. I just can't get it over here. They used to do root beer in McDonald's when I was a kid. When I was about 10, 12 years old. Used to get root beer every single time. I honestly put it up there with Coca Cola. I would put it. Well, we don't want to get done for branding, so let's say Roca Rola. Uh, but yeah, honestly, I love root beer. I can't get it anywhere. I can't see it anywhere. So, buzzing. Um, Penny Lancaster Sport. Does it count if we unsubscribe and resubscribe? No, I kind of need 37 more. If you unsubscribe, I've got thir I need 38. And you resubscribe, I still need 37. Go on, that's simple maths. Come on. We need 37 more, not 37 people to unsubscribe and then resubscribe. That ain't going to work, is it? <laughs> okay. First thing, let's have a look at these missions. Let's have a look. If I can find them. Where have they gone? Over here. Oh, and Staypuff actually became a member. It's not subscribe, it became a member. <laughs> That's not going to help, but I appreciate Staypuff being a member anyway. Thank you, Staypuff. But don't forget, I did say this um, a couple of months ago that we do give a $30 gift card away um, every two months to one of our Platinum members. And I said, once we get to 10 members, I'll make it $50. $50 every two months given away to a platinum member and I think we're at seven members right now So again, if you want to be within a shot, I'll get a $50 gift card Be a platinum member. So yeah, thank you stay for for being a platinum member. Thanks. So dispatch missions So you can see here. I've unlocked all four um, Personal opinions There's been I mean these are all they're not set. They're not the same and the lengths are obviously different on the test server uh, the big feedback that I've had right now from talking to people is that they don't like the fact that you've got to dismantle all your squads that you've made for events and for medals and things like that. And I kind of get it. You know, I don't know how they're going to go about that, how they're going to do it, but it is a big problem. I, the, When it's something like 4,200, that's quite easy. You can use all your low-level bots. They're normally around, you know, 800. But when you need two bots of 4,200, those could be quite high. But when you need 22k, eight bots at that and five of them are gunners, that's going to really dismantle your teams. So the more specific they are, the harder it is to, you know, keep your teams intact. And all of a sudden, you're taking a player, you're taking a member of your team out, putting a different bot in. The bot doesn't, it doesn't work as right because you might not have any gunners in there. And it's just chaos. And I kind of agree that it's a bit of an oversight, maybe the testers. Um, but, you know, the concept of it is really good, but it's not quite there. It still needs some little tweaks. It still needs sort of editing a bit. And hopefully they can either reduce the values down or they can keep your squads intact while they do this. Uh, but with that bot not appearing in the game, I don't know how they're going to do it. But they definitely need to sort of change this, really. Uh, because it's causing a lot of uh, issues within people's squads. Um and me even as well. I mean, I had to spend about half an hour today rejigging my squads. And then these bots will come back. And then I'll send some different bots and have to put them in that team and switch them over again. It's just causing chaos. So they need to sort of look into this, really. Uh, don't forget as well, Decepticon ones are a lot lower. Um, and I put all my Decepticons in the uh, informations. And hopefully we can get them Decepticons up, get my player level up. And get more rewards. So make sure you're using the con side as well, guys. Um, and don't forget, as always, guys, if you've got any questions about... Listen, it doesn't have to be about Ability 11. It doesn't have to be about missions. But if you've got any questions at all, put them in the chat. I'm pretty confident I should be able to uh, answer most of them. And if not, I could go away and find out for our next stream. But yeah, if you've got any questions as well, guys, don't be scared to uh, put it in the chat. Okay. 
let's have a look at the new ability 11. So, first off, we're going to have a look at Skylinks. Now, I've only got the four star on my test account, sadly, but it'll do. So, Skylinks, let's put a bit of music on. Why not? There we go. If it's a bit loud, let me know, guys. But, yes. So, Skylinks, ability 11. So, Skylinks, ability 11, it makes him set two targets on fire. Well, that's wrong for a start. We'll talk about that in a minute. Um, I'm not sure if this is uh, bugged or not, but that ain't exactly right. Uh, dealing 3,458 damage over 8 seconds and follow with a shroud to do more damage. So obviously it's very similar apart from setting, it gets, sends out two fireballs. The Plasma Shroud uh, lowers enemy damage by 75%, so that's increased. So it's obviously quite hard to see uh, the lower of damage, but uh, the Plasma Shroud um, is pretty good. I like that, but let's be honest, no one really uses Plasma Shroud. Everyone uses the Flame Strike. Followed by Plasma Shroud, or they use Plasma Shroud, followed by Airstrike. So, you know, the individual bots, the individual abilities on their own are pretty irrelevant. No one uses Flame Strike on its own. No one uses Plasma Shroud on its own. They combo the two. That's how everyone uses Skylinks. Is there anyone in the chat that uses Skylinks just for one of the abilities? I doubt it. I really do. So, Skylink. So, don't forget, the description says, set two targets on fire. Skylink is down. We'll send him to the mortar. So, yeah, you know what? This time, in testing, it wasn't doing it. He set two on target, two on fire. If there's two not close to each other, he only sets one off. I stand corrected. <laughs> I swear to God, I tested that wasn't working. Uh, but yeah, you know, it's not bad. It increased the combo. It's how I hoped it would work, actually. So yeah, listen. The two flame strikes, it means that they will combo it. So I, I think I did it. Where did I do it? I hit, was it the beam laser at the front? I hit something and it didn't combo. So it might be in close proximity. We'll test it again. But if you can hit two targets, that's going to increase the combo. And that's pretty decent. Uh, we did test something else on the test server to make it a bit higher damage. And it was crazy good. But the ape said, no, this is a bit too powerful. The numbers are through the roof. We're going to scale it back again. Um, but hitting two targets just increased the combo. Um, so, yeah. Is it a good ability eleven? Yeah, it's pretty decent. So how I would use it, I normally use a shroud rather than the uh, flame strike. Wind chasers uses the uh, plasma shroud in in raid. See, I don't do raids. I don't bother. So there you go. Yeah. So the flame strikes hold it visually hitting one. But it is hitting two. So I think they need to work on the visuals. But it is working. But see that, that that section there cleared out with just one flame strike. Is crazy good. Crazy good. So links. Ability 11. Pretty impressive. It uses a plasma shroud like Wind Chaser does. Then yeah. Crazy good in um in raids. Flame strike on its own. Meh. But as a combo. Because you're hitting two targets. That's pretty decent. So uh, I'll give the uh, links one my seal of approval. Obviously, exactly the same for Blitzwing. And then we go on to Slash and Ripper Snapper. So I have given my Slash Ability 11 the second this, or the second that I knew this had hit. Crazy good. So 15 seconds, you are invincible to defenses as always, dealing X damage, with a 70% chance to deal twice damage now uh, and for stun. So it's 70% chance from 50%. Crazy good. I mean, the problem obviously with Slash is trying to get her in position. Uh, it's just, it sounds like just crazy damage, but sometimes you've got to go through like five and six defenses to get to that HQ. That's how 90% of the people in the game use Slash, to Slash bases. So you clear a section out, send Slash in to one side, send a path upwards, 
and she slashes the base basically kills the base in two abilities but you've got to try and be careful your points so you want to get her through the base as quick as you can you want to use your titan or you can bind her to weaken defenses so she gets through defenses faster so having a 70 percent chance to deal double damage is great for slash absolutely amazing it gets her through the base faster which means using less ability points to get through the base she can get nearer to that hq and get the HQ down. So I've been slashing a few bases in untracked wars recently. So I'm at the stage where once I get at 64. I'm going to start slashing bases in tracked wars. No one really uses uh, the flare mines anymore. Those are prevalent in the game come six months ago. But then the MSM mines came in. No one uses flare mines anymore. Everyone tried to prevent sack. So I'm going to start trying to use slash. And ability 11. Absolutely amazing. And for me. Probably a pick of the bunch. Probably the ability 11 out of all of them. I know it's only a small batch this time around. It's only, what, five bots. Um, but yeah, this for me is a pick of the bunch. Absolutely amazing. And that's what most of the testers sort of said as well. So it's not like I'm, you know, I'm being one-sided because I've got Slash at a higher level and enjoy her. But yeah, really good. Um, this is a general setup as well with uh, Megatronus and with Lionizer. So... Yeah, absolutely, absolutely pleased with this. Absolutely uh, buzzing about this. Uh, love slash amazing. So, next on the list, red alert. And this is where we start to go a bit backwards. So, red alert's ability 10. Give your allies 50% damage absorption and stun immunity for 9.5 seconds. So, that increases to 10 with ability 11. And, you know, that's pretty good. Fair enough. Um, the ability level, though, oh, oh, yes, it increases the duration and the damage. But you become invulnerable for 10 seconds. Now, when people heard this, they went wild. They were like, invulnerability? That's OP as hell. Give me invulnerability. I will take it. And then they found out that that's also affected by the FFDs like his um like his damage absorption is affected by the ffds so is his invulnerability just like hot rod ffds affect invulnerability and so if there's an ffd in place that invulnerability for 10 seconds is zero so it, you can make it 100 seconds if you want but it's under an ffd it ain't working and that's not really you know not really good, is it? Let's be honest. And MD Prime asked me to show uh, Slash in testing. I can, but it's hard to compare her without doing it. A test with ability 10 and test ability 11. Um, but yeah, she can fly through bases a lot faster. Uh, but it's hard to compare. We can show it. It's no problem. But it's obviously hard to compare. Same with um, Red Alert. We'll give him 11. We'll take him in testing. We'll show you. Um, but under FFDs, it ain't going to work. So let's take uh, we'll take um, some of the bots are covered already into the FFT into the uh, into battle. Unless it pulls us put you kill the FFDs first. Yeah, that's all well and good unless you're like me on the test server and you've got five of them. <laughs> I literally I was getting killed a lot in the war test by people with tracks. I was like, I ain't having this. I'm not having people with a four star beat my base. So I put um I put five FFDs out. <laughs> and if you don't believe me, FFD, 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 and everyone somewhere, I think, somewhere, yeah, FFD, up there. I said electric core, it was a FFD, but yeah, you get the idea. FFDs all around. So, let's do red alert first. Let's do slash up here. She's not going to path up there, but. So, could do it now. We can use red alert. There we go. Under FFD. Let's set it up there. 100% damage absorption. No, because of the FFD. Let's use Slash then. Nope, she's stunned. I ain't going nowhere. Nope, stunned. This is why I hate Chromium on test server. <laughs> Uh, 
and buy slash. <laughs> and that's why. See, let's suppose just put, uh, oh, Smokey snipes them. Smokey doesn't do enough damage to, sm to snipe them in Prime League, sadly. On Prime League hard, they have too much HP to snipe with uh, Smokey, sadly. So that's a no-go. It, it takes two abilities, so it's 6, 12, 18. It's like 18 abilities to take them out. So that's not going to happen. But we'll try again. We'll try and slash my base if we can. I know there's no um, flare mines anyway. But... Um... Oh, we've got a team set up. There we go. <laughs> MD Prime, but what you tried. Yeah. <laughs> it's because FFDs are there. Basically, FFDs stop red alert in his tracks. Ah, like in his tracks, get it? Sorry. Funny joke. But wasn't funny. <laughs> but there you go. Okay. So this is what I've been doing to uh, do a bit of a... So let's just clear a section. Blaster down now. Put his minions down there to protect them a minute. So once we get to like 40 ability points are close, we'll use Bumblebee there. Stun that area. Then we're going to launch Slash now. So Slash will hopefully come up here by the time this beamler is taken out, hopefully. So we can sort of uh, weaken these defences a bit for Slash. If you can get out of this stun, that is. So we'll send Slash up there. So Slash is going to path around there. Then we're going to path it upwards again. So we'll keep going right until we path it that way. And there we go. Send slash round. As always, slash goes the opposite way, but we we'll send it back again. Let's have a look. How many abilities? I'm thinking two abilities should take the HQ down now. It normally takes two to three. What we can do is we can hit them there like that. Do bit of extra damage there with a the Titan. Two abilities down, pretty much. Obviously, on hard mode, you might take a bit less of the base out, but, you know... The idea is to get Slash up there, two abilities on the HQ, so you've got to save enough points, you've got to try and get through the base as much as you can using the least ability points possible. That's why Bumblebee is so good. I know people will say like, oh, Slash is really OP, but if you've got Flare Mines, anti-stun cores, that's going to cause a bit of a problem with, with Path in Slash, because you've got to start using more expensive abilities, um, and Flare Mines will stop her, so you might have to do a sack, which means you're popping the Combiner, and you've got to deal with that, so there are ways to counter Slash. There are good ways to counter her. It's not OP if you can counter her. Listen, if you choose not to use them counters, then that's on you. You've chosen to defend against something else. And so it'd be interesting to see if Flare Mines do come back a bit, and then maybe Sack will come back. But then again, has Sack ever actually gone? But that's a question for another day. That's another conversation. But yeah. Okay. Next up on the hit list, we've got Sunstreaker. So, Sunstreaker's ability 11. So, shoots out six wide impact rockets and then go for large area in flames. So, Sunstreaker's ability 11. I have to show you the four star to show it, I think. Uh, it increases the impact area per rocket by 75%. And people have been asking, like, impact area, does that mean it's a bigger area effect? No. The best thing to do here is I've done some maths and we'll show you this in action. So, let's go with the four star first. So, 
the four four star sunstreaker does and there's some maths involved here so bear with me guys uh four star sunstreaker with his g1 core does 6328 damage 6328 damage so this beam laser with a uh, silver uh, health code of 6324. So by right, Sunstreaker should just about take this out with his ability. It's only four damage extra, uh, but he should take it out. And I've picked the wrong squad that hasn't got Sunstreaker in it, so that ain't happening. <laughs> Let's try again, eh? Noob. Actually, well put. Yay for maths! I think someone was a bit of a geek at school. <laughs> Matt Paul has put, I've moved teams for the event and had my first ever go in primary today. It's hard. It is hard. If you go in primary in hard mode, it's even harder. Well, unless you're in psyops and then it's not that hard. <laughs> to be honest with you. Okay. So let's put the four star sunstreaker in there just for testing purposes, just to prove a point. And here we go. So the feedback we gave about sunstreaker in the test chat was it doesn't quite do enough damage. It needs an increase in damage. The ape said, no, we think it does enough. We said the burn needs to be faster. That's the problem. The ape said, no, it burns fast enough. Um, and then we said, maybe it needs a bigger area. It needs a cost reduction. The ape said, no, it doesn't need a bigger area. And uh, no. It doesn't need a cost reduction. But the cost per damage it does is brilliant. And we said, yeah, but damage over time, especially in the current meta, doesn't work. It does not work. Everyone's using repair cores on the MDS. And Sunstreaker can't even get near the MDS. So, but. So, as we said, 6328 damage. Uh, 6324. So, 4-star Sunstreaker takes it out, yeah? So, such a good ability. Fast forward a bit. And no. No, it doesn't. You can see that the Kremzik's ready to burn, but it does not do the damage stated. It does slightly less. And that's because the spread of the missiles, they don't 100% hit it. So, it's, it's an average over the area. So, when you do Jazz, no matter where you hit with Jazz, if you hit one defense, it will do whatever damage Jazz does, say 7k damage. If you hit between two, it'll do 7k to both. So, now we're going to take Sunstreaker and hit between two defenses. We're going to try to take out, this is what we're going to use Sunstreaker for, let's be honest. We're going to try and combo him and try and take out multiple defenses in one go. So we're going to use them again, but this time we're going to hit the mortars right in the middle. Right in the middle there. And you can see there that it's not going to take out two defences side by side. It's not going to do it. So... What does the ability 11 do? So now, let's swap out. Uh, so, next up we've got... So, on these mortars, these do 6554 damage. 6554. 6554. So, if you go into base trials and put the 5 star back in. Put Sunstreaker in. So we haven't put a VM in, but he does 6579. So again, slightly more damage than what the mortars are at. So going off with the four star, the five star will be slightly too short. Use Sunstreaker on the mortars.
and the mortars go. So, to put it in context, Sunstreaker's ability 11 guarantees what damage he should do. I don't know. I'm baffled by it, basically. Ability 11 just makes him do his damage that he should do. But surely, he should do that regardless. He should do whatever damage is advertised. It doesn't matter where the burn is. It doesn't matter where it's situated. Some streakers should do equal damage no matter where you hit. If it's on the edge of his ability, it should do the same amount of burn. It shouldn't matter where it is. And when you place it in the middle of three defences, it should do equal damage and should guarantee the damage. So what his ability 11 just guarantees what it should do anyway. It, it makes no sense to me at all. It increases the area. It doesn't increase the area of effects that much. So, I don't get it. I really don't understand. Maybe someone in playtest is more clever than me. But, I don't know. I mean, it just, I'll be honest with you. The damage it does seems a bit better than what I thought it would. Um, and we can show that again. Because I was quite impressed. Because I've seen some videos on playtest. Um, of uh, someone using Sunstreaker. And I thought, you know what? That's actually... A bit better than what I thought. It's not as awful as I thought. It doesn't make him good though. So let's put a VM on him. Yes, action whale. Yes, his ability 11 makes him do as advertised. I know. Let's go hard mode. Prime League. Top level of the game. Five star maxed out Sunstreaker. Let's go. So, Sunstreaker, let's go. I know. Vix Motion put Sunstreaker meta. Are you crazy? No, I'm not crazy. Mortars down. Beam lasers down. Cannons. Pretty much down. Kremzik's been jumping all over. Look at that range as well. Sunstreaker, right in the middle there. We'll send him in there. Let's use our Titan on that. That'll spread the Krem Zeke a bit further as well. Ooh, it's a bit out of range there, but we'll send it up as well. And there we go. Sunstreaker on his own has actually cleared out quite a decent area. And he actually did, as advertised, it actually even killed the cannon as well. So, I don't actually think he's that bad. I just think that his ability 11 is useless, apart from increasing his damage slightly. So, Sunstreaker, better than I thought, but his ability 11 is pretty rubbish, let's be honest. So, you know, basically, the apes need to make him do as advertised. And that ability 11... It's a bit like Jetfire. So, when I give Jetfire ability 11, it wasn't for the extra damage they did on the way. It was just to give him that extra damage. That was all it was. Um, Risk just put an, put an MDS and let us see what it does. Yeah, but it, let's be honest. It's not a bot in the game that will kill that MDS. Jetfire won't kill that MDS. There's a lot of bots won't kill the MDS. Jazz won't kill the MDS. So it's irrelevant trying to put one on an MDS. Let's be honest. If you couple it with someone else, but they've got repair cores on. So there's no point in putting um Sunstreak on an MDS. There's no you can't compare that, sadly. Um but yeah, it's not an MDS bot. You could probably couple it if you couple it with someone good, but you know, I don't think it's as bad as that. I don't think it's as bad. Now if I pulled from batch one, if I pulled Sunstreaker, I wouldn't be as disappointed as I thought I'd be. After seeing me in action. I'd be disappointed that I've got to spend a million Spark and 70k Zen just to give him a damage increase, like I did Jetfire. But I'd probably give it him anyway. But he still needs fixing as well. Yeah, Vincent, he did have uh, yeah, uh, a G1 would be pretty good as well. Um, to spread the flames. Um, 
I've not got a vault, I've not got a G metal um uh G one, but I presume it uh it does the same as the vault I'll make sure I hope. If it does, then that's pretty good. But yeah, so on to the next one. So like I said, we're going through the e we're going through disappointing bots now. So let's get on to Ultra Magnus. So Ultra Magnus. So again, Ultra Magnus does seven thousand six hundred and forty two damage. If the main target is destroyed, it explodes doing two thousand eight hundred and sixty six damage to adjacent targets. Sounds pretty good. So seven six four two. So on normal mode, seven six four two is slightly more than an auto cannon with a five percent building increase. I know it's a bit unrealistic, guys. I mean, you don't put armor on cannons anyway, but you get. So we're trying to see if it does seven six two five damage, and I'm sure by now you can see where this is going. Ultra Magnus, let's go. Time for a bit of boot beer. Don't worry, it ain't alcohol. I don't want to get demonetized. It's only pop. Okay. Ultra Magnus. Come on. I know you can take this cannon out. I know you can. Come on. Your damage states you can take this cannon out. He hits the cannon. And no. No, he doesn't. So, Ultra Magnus does not do the damage that's advertised. And why is that? Because his rockets are too random. But, it's ability 11. Let's test it out. Let's try and destroy this target. Boom! So, ability 11 wise, it's pretty good. If you can destroy the target. But again, it doesn't do as advertised. That's the problem. He does not do what his damage states he does. That is the problem. That is the problem with bots like this. Is that when you take them into battle, especially in Prime League, you're depending on these bots to do X damage. That's the damage you want them to do. And that's the damage they should do. Because that's the damage that's advertised. That is... That's how it should work. It's simple as that. It's simple maths. And Ultra Magnus, 7625. He doesn't do 7625. He doesn't do 7642. He doesn't even do 7625. Just about 7550 or something. So his ability 11 is pretty decent. It does extra damage in an area after it's destroyed. I like his ability 11. But they need to get these stats right first. They said it's a rework of Ultra Magnus. Change his pathing then. Change it. Why is his ability not the same as Galvatron's? The problem is the randomness. And if you don't believe me on that, I'll show you something. And this is going to make you tick. Let's try Galvatron. Same situation. So maxed out Galvatron. Ability 11. Nothing on him. So we've had a lot of complaints recently from cons about Blitzwing and Skylinks not being the same. Not being comparable. Nemesis Prime and Hot Rod not being the same. Not being comparable. And, you know, they need to be uh, linked up. So remember, we had a cannon there, 7625, Galvatron, just 7642, Ultra Magnus, couldn't take it out. And we hit a T-Lock mine. <laughs> Typical. And so, watch this. Cannon. Damage on the way. Cannon destroyed. So not only does Galvatron do the damage that he is advertised to do. He also does damage on the way to the target. So he does more damage than Ultra Magnus at the same level. And we'll do it again just to show. And my feedback 
in playtest at the start. And I don't get too involved in playtest. I'll leave the occasional comment here and there now. And I said, I said, why can't we not have Ultra Magnus simply have Galvatron's ability? That would make it nice and simple. Both bots are the same. Never got any any traction with it. Never got any feedback. Uh, Bricks Motion has put, uh, what if ever max G Metal G1? Wouldn't I make it? I'm not sort of commenting about that on what damage he does. What I'm saying is, he doesn't do damage as stated. Even with his G1 on, if he changes uh, his damage, it wouldn't change a thing. He still doesn't do what's advertised. So again, we'll use the cannon. So hit the cannon. So watch the spider mine. Watch the resource building. So it's hit some damage around it, but not hit the resource building. So it doesn't do damage in a line. It does some random damage around it. But it's random damage. You've got no idea what it actually does. But again, if we use Galvatron again. Let's go with Galvatron again. And as we said, does damage through the line to the target and actually does as stated. So the question is, as always, is Ultra Magnus broken? You know, his pathing is awful. It doesn't do as advertised. It doesn't do the same damage as Galvatron. And this was, I thought that this was the idea. The idea was to balance him out with Galvatron. And they haven't done that at all. They've talked about balancing him out. But they haven't balanced him. One bit. I don't know what they think they've balanced him and how. Because this is not balanced. Both bots should have identical abilities. It's the cannon. Take it out. Damage on the way to both targets. Simple as that. Plain and simple. All they need to do is take Galvatron's ability and give it to Ultra Magnus. Job done. There's there's no balancing other than that needed. That's pretty much it. His pathing's awful, but I get he's different. So people like that maybe. It walks off around walls. I don't like it myself. I don't like the range of his ability. His, um, I don't like the range of his uh, basic attack. But it is what it is maybe. But listen. We can't get past this. We can't forgive this. The fact that it doesn't do as stated. It doesn't. And Galvatron does more. It needs to be balanced. And you can't give Ultra Magnus more damage. And different abilities. Just match them up. And listen. We can't give Galvatron's Ultra Magnus ability. Because it ain't doing as stated. So dead simple. Ultra Magnus needs Galvatron's ability. Plain and simple. It really is that easy. That's got to be done. That's got to be done done and there you go so on the whole uh skylinks yeah it's pretty good good for comboing it's a pretty good ability 11 um slash brilliant pick of the bunch absolutely love her ability 11 uh sunstreaker <laughs> a lot like jetfire i was very disappointed with jetfire it's increases his damage but again sunstreaker needs fixing Regardless of his ability 11, regardless of his G1 core, he needs fixing as a bot to do the damage as stated. We did ask him playtest for his ability to be changed. They said no. Like I said, we asked them 101 questions to fix Sunstreaker. And they just said no. So, basically, Sunstreaker is broken. Ultra Magnus, same as Sunstreaker. It doesn't do as stated. Totally different ability than Galvatron. Absolutely broken. And they need to uh, sort this out. Uh, you know, the rework needs to happen where Ultra Magnus gets Galvatron ability. Other than that, ability 11 is pretty good. Uh, it's not too bad if you can take a target out. It's quite low damage though, really, as, as, as such. Um, but yeah, red alerts. It's good if there's no FFDs. No FFDs, that's OP to hell. FFDs, not so much. So, a bit of a mixed bag. Ability 11, to be honest with you. Um, but yeah, I'll be giving mine to Slash. If I had Lynx, I'd give it to Lynx as well. I'd probably give it to Sunstreaker. I'll be honest. Um, I'd probably give it to... I'd probably give it to all of them. I probably would in some way. But some of them are a bit tainted. Because I'm giving Ability 11 to a poor bot, which is Sunstreaker. A poor, still a poor bot, which is Magnus, which is supposed to be a rework. And Red Alerts. 
with the current meta is not going to be that useful really so bit of a mixed bag but yeah uh but on the plus side ultra magnus has been reduced that reduced from seven plus three to five plus three so uh, that's your rework a reducing cost that's pretty much it okay but i just want to say as well that you know the playtesters did go to town on this Lots of ideas, lots of suggestions. They've all backed Sunstreak again and improved Ultra Magnus. And it's just fell on deaf ears, sadly. And I'm sure if you're asking the playtesters, they'll say the same thing. And it's it's quite sad to see, really, that, uh, you know, these voices when... I've always said that when the playtesters are all in unison and they all agree on something, the apes need to stand up and listen there. They need to think, right, well, something's not right. Because most of the time, we disagree. Someone will say, I like this bot. Someone will say, it's not strong enough. And it depends on what level you play at. depends on your expectations and what you like and what you don't like in the game. So everyone has different opinions. And I get that. That you know, When that happens, the apes have got to make a decision based on all the feedback. And there's no right or wrong answer there. They've just got to make a decision on that. But when all the playtesters, and I mean all of them, are saying, this is not good enough. This doesn't work right. And the apes are ignoring that. For me, it's not really good enough. You know, we need to listen to playtesters. They're a, a section of the player base. And I'll guarantee when this goes out to the player base, we'll get the same feedback as we got from the playtesters. If all the playtesters are in unison saying it's not right, the rest of the community will be the same. So I, I don't understand it. And then in a year's time, or in six months' time, when they've got the time, they'll be doing a rework again. Why not just fix it now? Just fix it now while you're doing that and why you've got the bot. You know, already in your hands, ready to rework it there and then. But yeah. Okay, now let's have a look at the new bots, Whirl and Sea Phantom. So, Sea Phantom first. We've got to show the cons so we don't get uh, accused of being anti con. But there is Sea Phantom. Uh, looks wise, love this bot. I think Sea Phantom is super, super cool. Reminds a bit about Slash. Um, in robot mode, but yeah, uh, super super cool. Um, can't wait for the new combiners as well. Uh, but yeah, super super cool. Really like that. Cool. Now let's have a look at uh Whirl as well. We've got Whirl here as well. There's Whirl. Not a big fan of Whirl. I'm not gonna lie. Nothing to do with the apes. Just um, not a big fan, but I think there's a bit of a, a error with the uh, camera, which they need to shoot, uh, sort out. The camera sort of judders, uh, but you can see there just about um, that. Yeah, was pretty. Uh, you know, it is what it is. Yeah, not too bad in um, in vehicle mode, but not just not a fan of the um, the, the robot mode in general. It was the toy, just a bit a bit leggy. It's a bit leggy in it. You know what I mean? A bit, I don't know. It just feels like you just get kicked to one side and he's gone. Just get destroyed really easy. Not much to him. He's not really beefy. Like, look at Rhinox. He looks beefy and stronger. This guy, uh, I don't know. I I'd put him lower than smoke screen in terms of how beefy he looks. But, nah, I don't know. It'll do a job. Okay. So, let's look at uh, C Phantom as he is without a VM. So, uh... Max 4 star, uh, level 10, uh, shoots out 4 rockets that deal 6535 from long range to a single target. Acid Thrower, level 10, produce a cone of acid dealing 4289 damage over 6 seconds in a large area. Then let's have a look at uh, Will, who's got a uh, VM attached because they're gunners. So 7548 damage. So, yeah, pretty decent damage. And then produce a cone of fire dealing almost 5k damage over 6 seconds. Now, what sort of quite hit me and was a bit like, a bit a bit strange, was that we were talking, at the same time this bot was in test, we were talking about Sunstreaker. And we said, listen, damage over time is not good. No one likes damage over time in the current meta. And then they gave the new bot basically sort of Sunstreak's ability with less range. Damage over time. And we were like, ooh, like, I get it's only six seconds, but we don't like damage over time. We want 
direct damage. You know, if it's damage over time for me. So if you've got two bots and one does direct damage and one does damage over time. The direct damage should maybe do 7k. The damage over time should do maybe 10k. Because it's 10k, but if there's any healing in that area, it's going to get wiped out very quickly. Damage over time should always do more damage than direct damage. And we've got we've got a direct damage of 7548 and a dot damage of 5000. Now, I get that it's just a dot damage, it's an area damage. So maybe it's you're doing 5000 in an area compared to 7548. But because of so much healing, that gets eradicated quite quickly. But maybe, maybe we're missing something with this bot. Maybe. Super Scott says, why is it a gunner? So these abilities don't stack. I think this is going to be the new norm. That new bots will maybe have two abilities. Or decent bots might have two abilities. It might have one really good one. Or two pretty good ones. And that's a good... I like that. I've always said that new content should be better than old content. And a bot having two abilities is good. That's a, that's, a, that's a positive. It's a change in the game to make it better. So, if the first ability is better than Prowl, and the second ability is the same as Sunstreak or better, then listen, you're getting two abilities for the price of one. Yeah, super cool. I'm on, I'm on board with that. I'm on board. I like that. I like it. Two abilities on a bot. I'm sold. I'm sold. Big Smoke just put, they could do two ability warriors. Exactly, they could do two abilities on anything pretty much. If they did all the new combiner with two abilities, I am sold, guys. Love it. But then two abilities have still got to be decent, though. You know. So let's have a look. So, Whirl. So look at his first ability. So you can see there, it's like jet range. Now, this is super cool because with anti air cores, I'm using anti air cores in the current meta. Just to prove a point. There you can see there. Anti-air cores. Having a gunner means that he's not going to hit by anti-air cores. So the jet flies over. Gets hit and comes back. SG jet fire obviously doesn't. But I like this. I like it. You know. It's a decent amount of damage. So let's take out that uh, mortar there. Target protocol is a massive. Um, you know. Nuisance in the current meta. So you know. He could take out these mortars. This one has a bit of an armor on. But it might be able to take it out still. You can see there, look, you can take out target protocol mortars from a distance. Super, super cool. So, hang on a minute. So, we've, took it, we've taken out the uh, mortars from range, right? We've done the long range stuff. Let's use our flame. And now we're going to take out the beam laser. Did I miss it? Let's try again. Let's try again. Oh, now it hits it. So basically, the first ability, super cool. I like it. It's got good range, got good damage. But the flame ability, it doesn't actually hit where it's supposed to hit. It shows X range, but that range is massively shortened for some reason. It doesn't do what it's... You aim at something that's inside that area, it should hit it. It should hit it. Plain and simple. I know people might be thinking, oh, what's his on one tonight? He's having a rant, he's having a rant and a rave. Because I would just want them to do what they're supposed to do. Is that hard? Is, is it that hard? Let's go again. Maybe it's me. Maybe it's me. So look, it's in range, which means it's targetable. Let's hit it. No. Nope. Let's try again. It's in a bit bit shorter range now. Nope. It's got a bit shorter. It's a bit closer. Can we hit it now? Now we've hit it. Now we've hit it. Now we've hit it. There you go. You know, the range should match the cash range. Simple as that. So, do I like this bot's, this bot's first ability? Yeah. Really cool. That second ability... It's never getting used. Hardly ever. You know, if your gunner's that close, that it needs to take out something that close, it's pretty poor. For me, the second ability is to have the same range as the first ability. 
And while we're on the subject of cons and Autobots doing the same, check this out. So here is Sea Phantom. So, obviously, it hasn't got a VM core. So, is it, is it going to do the same amount of damage? So, C Phantom, let's go. First ability, good range. Yeah, rocket's a bit like um, Spinister, so pretty good. Now I hit the beam laser, let's try him out. Where was that going? What the hell? Let's try again, let's, let's hit him. Hey, that hit it. That hit it. There we go. That hit it. Sit that over there. There we go. Let's try and hit these. Uh, let's try and hit the beam laser or these mines. Let's hit these mines. What? I hit the mine. Not the resource building. What the hell? Where was that even hitting? It's crazy. I don't understand how they can release bots like this. I don't understand it. Let's try again. Let's try again. So, I want him to hit X. I'm going to put the ability on X. And I want it to do damage to X. Pretty simple, really. Okay, let's just do uh he's in the middle there. Let's do the damage over here. Over there. Oh, he's done damage there and there and a bit over there. Let's do damage to that mine over there. Let's go that way. What the what what? No no, let's go let's go over here. Let's go to this mine over here then. Let's go let's go over this way. What no! That way! Not what? What are you doing? That way. Right. Let's go this way then. Let's go that way. What are you doing? No backwards. What the? What is going on? How has this bot been released? I was disappointed with the Autobot, and when the Decepticon said, "Oh yeah, the acid started going all over," I was like, "Well, so's the Autobot." Not like that. What? the hell is that I'm, i've got i'm i'm literally speechless i am literally speechless uh, i don't know we've got a broken bot before it's even come out what is the, what 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 oh my dear. i don't understand this honestly i do not understand it i don't understand how a bot can be released like this have they have they actually even tested this bot before release? Are they the and you know what the annoying thing is? Is the playtesters have fed all this back. This is in the playtest chart saying that acid's going all over, saying that the second ability is not good enough, and it's still still ignored. And this is one of the reasons where I've sort why I've sort of left playtest. I was a massive voice in that playtest. Listen, I'm sure if you ask all the playtesters, they'll probably say that. Maybe it's a bit too vocal. But when you've been in playtest for two or three years and you're constantly f giving feedback and then constantly things like this happen, you get a bit frustrated and you start to be a bit narky and maybe not being constructive because it happens time and time and time and time and time again for the last two years. And the new... The new um, the new testers come in and think, oh, what was a bit narky? This is... But if you talk to me outside of that, I I'm not the same person because it's pure frustration on my part. And I don't want to be a part of this, you know, because your feedback's ignored half the time. And I don't want people to be, you know, I, I know sometimes in the Cybertron chat, people go on at the playtesters saying like, oh, playtesters can't do their job and things like that. Listen, trust me, guys. 
the play testers have given this feedback. They have said this bot does not work properly. They have said the second ability is not good enough. They have said that Sunstreaker is not good enough. They've said Ultra Magnus need a better fix. They have said that Red Alert under FFDs is pretty useless. They fed all this back and the apes have gone, well, we're going to do it anyway. So what's really the point of having play testers then? And I've always said, if you're going to have play testers, listen to them. Listen to them. Take their advice. Take it on board. And make some changes. And in some aspects they've done that. But not on this occasion. And everything just feels a bit rushed. Everything feels rushed. Like we've seen time and time again. And it's quite sad that these bots just slightly fall short of the mark. With some slight changes. You know. If they literally. If they made links when it fires two targets. The visuals hit two targets. Not just one. You'd be able to see which two is hitting rather than look at the damage. You don't want to see that in battle. It's you know, it need the visuals need fixing. In terms of Sunstreaker, it doesn't do damage as advertised. That needs fixing. Ultra Magnus, don't do damage as advertised. Does less than Galvatron, that needs fixing. Red Alert's ability is used under FFD, which is massive prevalent. That's probably not that good. That's probably need fixing itself as well. Whirl and Sea Phantom, they're not even in the game yet, and they need fixing. And you know, all these things are sort of broken. But sometimes, sometimes it works to our advantage a bit. Sometimes when these glitches come in the game and these errors, sometimes things like this happen. Is that a five-star dust-up? Five star streetwise. Five star cup. A whole team of five star technobots. A five star tiger hawk and five star dinobot. And five star Alf Bravo and Slingshot. Who? Who's that? The, uh, the who? Where did he come from? A seventh combiner bot? And it ain't just Autobots. Apparently, Sea Phantom. It's now a Combaticon. I've also got a five-star Vortex. Predacons. I think they're as they are. I think, I think that's the only one probably is. Constructicons. Got a five-star Long Haul. Terracons. Five-star Cutthroat. Five-star Sinner Twin. A uh, whole team of five-star Destrons. Five-star Dinobot 2 and Waspinator. And a five-star Dead End as well. And a five-star Drag Strip. What is going on? And if you think this is a test server, go and check your game out, guys. Go and check your collections in your game. This ain't test server. This is the test server you're looking at right now. But go and check out your game. Go and look in your game right now and check this out, guys. This is in the game. Does this mean that two batches are coming? Does this mean that we're going to get a five-star Computron and a five-star Defensor and five-star Abominos and Lausak rather than Volcanic is what we thought we might get? What does this mean? Why is Slingshot in the game? What is going on? Sometimes we get little Easter eggs like this. Have they just given away the next five-star batch? Well in advance. A five star cup and dead end would be ridiculous. If if five star cup and dead end is in the next batch, I'm sold. I'm going for that. That is done. Cup Lagoon in zone fifteen. Sold. Take my money right now. But it just seems a bit weird. It's like ten five stars in there. Are they doing two batches? What is going on? I'm I'm totally perplexed by this. But you know. It's totally strange. 
But yeah, I I can't I can't wait to see what happens to this. I can't wait to see what happens to this. See, look. No five-star slug, though, or slug. Does that mean we're not getting Volcanicus in the game? But this is the biggest... This is the weirdest one. Slingshot. When are we getting Slingshot? And is Alpha Bravo going to disappear from the game? Is that combined going to become seven? Or... Is that going to be the five-star part? Who's to know? Who's to know? But, uh, yeah, very, very strange. Very strange. Uh, Bricks Motion's put the removed slingshot from the game. Uh, maybe. It's replaced with Whirl instead. That's, that's just as bad. That's just bizarre. You know? Exactly. Why is Sea Phantom? I don't know. I'm baffled. Uh, Lance's put, who is Slingshot? So for those that don't know, in the G1 cartoon, Slingshot was a part of Superion. When the DW Comics got hold of it, they replaced Slingshot with Alpha Bravo. They also replaced uh, Groove with Rook. Um, so all the boxer combiners didn't actually match. They changed some of them. And so, yeah. Chris Taylor said, just checked it out. Five stack up and dust up. Yeah. Very bizarre. Very bizarre. So, we'll have to wait and see whether that will be the next five-star batch. To have a full batch of Computron and a full batch of Lyle Kaiser. Maybe it's a glitch. Maybe it ain't. Maybe that is what's coming. Only time will tell. Uh, but that's the case. I think I've got a few of my uh, five-star um, suggestions right. But, uh, yeah. Excited to see what the next five-star batch will be. Excited to see a five-star cup. Because there is a five-star cup and dead end in the China server. There is a five-star uh, cutthroat and tracks in the China server. So, there is five-star Cine Twin and uh, Streetwise as well. So, Vortex and Dust Up is in the China server. So, it's not like these bots have come from Oblivion. These bots are already in the China server. So be very interesting and Lance has put a five star cup's not good for prime war no but he is good for cup lagooning in zone 15 i could pretty much get a 70 percent success rate with a four star cup so a five star cup will have a better success rate without a doubt so it'll be uh interesting but yeah so yeah uh but other than that uh what have we been doing so let's look at the uh normal server so, like I said, we did give Slash ability 11. Uh, that was done straight away. Straight away. Um, I don't have Ultra Magnus. I don't have Sunstreaker or Lynx as 5 stars. I do have Red Alert, but I don't use him. And the reason I don't use Red Alert is the FFDs. Plain and simple. Oh, there it is. I wonder where that was. And we've got some bots back from missions. Sets gone squadron complete. Let's collect the rewards. There they are. Scourge. Hook. And we've got the same one again. Very strange, but hey. Scourge. And... Oh, Hawk again. Dispatch. Gone for four hours. I'm not too sure if they change or not, but uh, I presume they do. But you know what's really cool about this? I love the fact that Papa Blaz has written all these um, stories to go with them. Super, super cool. So it looks like these uh these will stay the same. So yeah, uh, another ten hours for this one, uh, three days for this one, and I'm gonna unlock the two uh, other ones at weekend. So yeah, pretty cool, pretty cool. And just to show, just to prove I'm not a liar. Ability eleven, 
super super cool getting her to like said 64 this weekend this is the general setup of slash from megatronus and i like lion eyes we're talking in the chat today someone put dazzle strike just for the increase in dps uh don't forget lion eyes does that uh by increasing damage um but then blast in a line as well just extra damage in a line um so yeah i prefer lionizer uh definitely for slash uh into the leveling bots not much really um because like i said most of max wheel jacks getting close to 64 it'll get over the edge this weekend um laser Artemis is about halfway there but will be about halfway there no 64 sorry uh so yeah uh, might even get a liter up to 64, but uh, other than that, everyone else is pretty much maxed. I don't really use Sandstorm. He's close to being 65, so uh, yeah, Rook 64, and so yeah, 63, 64, uh, most of my bots. So yeah, a few of them will, uh, especially Slash will get up this weekend, and uh, maybe a liter and Smokey if I've got time to get them up. We'll wait and see. Uh, Red Alerts, start at 59, 10. Don't really use him. FFD has ruined him. I will start and level him, but no, I just find him. I don't know. I'm not a big fan. Not a big fan. You can see there, these are the bots that I've got on missions. So I've been sent out. Try to do some low level bots or bots that I don't use really in leveling much or in wars much. So I've tried to keep the bots that have good abilities that I use. So I use Goldfire in my leveling team and I've got a team of sat around him. I have a uh, five star elite to one, uh, and then use bots around her. Bumblebee use bots around her. Slash use bots around her. Uh, I use sea spray. So there's certain bots that I use as a main uh, leveler, then have bots to sort of help them out really, and I try and keep those bots out of the uh, missions completely. Uh, the bots that surround them doesn't matter too much, but uh, yeah, definitely need those bots that. Uh, the main leveling bots. And just as I said before, so let's have a look at the live server collections. Rust Renegades. And that is on the live server. Look. So let's have a look at aerial bots. Because someone said they've been he's been removed. So now we've got Whirl apparently. And Alpha Bravo was five stars. So yeah. And C Phantom apparently is a five star. And Vortex. Very strange. Who's missing from there? I'm trying to work it out now. Who's missing from there? Swindle, Blaster, Thrall, Onslaught, Vortex, and. Someone missing. Who can tell me first? Before I guess. It's got to be a warrior of some kind, surely. Who is it? Who's missing from there? Mm, can't think. But yeah, I'm sure someone will put it in there. Was it only five bots? I thought it was six bots. They just randomly added one in. Was it five bots? Is that right? I can't remember. Ah, it's only five. I've been added in. That's weird, isn't it? Was it? Uh, was it stunt cons that was six? Was it? Ah, it was stunt cons that was six. That's the reason. Gotcha. I knew it was one by six. Okay, cool. Yeah, I should have guessed that really. In the cartoons, they only have five, don't they, really? For most combined, apart from Devastator. So, yeah. Cool. So, what else have we been doing this week? <coughs> so, I'm trying to get my play level up to get some more shards. Only 1,200 uh, needed. So, uh, in terms of research, so we've uh, we've leveled Streetwise up to six, uh, 51. So, he's got through the lab now. Uh, we've got, he's away on a mission. Uh, we've got Beast World Silver Bolt in the lab, 51. Um, I think we might be, I think that's it, I think. I think we're going to level someone up and put them through the lab. Um, no such cons get put through, but we'll try to get our player level up to get some more shards. In terms of shards, got some decent shards last week. Um... Just claim that so 1380 shards but we've got almost 50k four star shards 12k five star shards 5k combat shards 10,000 prime core shards so we want to get this to like you know 15 20k that's the idea so we can get some building g metal chips when hq18 comes out 
We've got two five-star combat pulls because of the anniversary event and that. We've got two and a half five-star crystal pull because we'll get 180 shards when we pull the other two bots. We've got like, you know, about another two and a half thousand five-star shards. So we'll get one and a half thousand shards for the next battle pass probably. Um, that'll put me within about a thousand five-star shards. So if we can get a, five, a thousand five-star shards between this event and the next saga, we'll have three five-star pulls. And if I can get this to 60,000 four-star shards, we'll then have another five-star pull just in that. So I'm hopefully, by the end of the next saga, I'll have four five-star pulls. And we are going to do the biggest crystal opening video ever, 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 ever. That is the idea. Super big crystal opening video. And Lance has asked when they're going to release the 65 cap. That will come with HQ18. When HQ18 drops, the cap will raise from 65 to 67 or 68, they said. So we'll get two or three more levels. But those levels will be ridiculous. Because you've got to think that uh, 64 bot. So you've got to think that this is 48 million xp so i'm betting that 65 to 66 will be about 60 million and then 66 67 will be about 80 million so you're talking about 140 million something around there to get a bot to level 67 that's going to be crazy it's going to be absolutely ridiculous and JP does not like crystal opening videos. Yeah, but you know what? Mine's different. Because I give away Sunstreaker was a stash crystals. Depending on, you know, whether you can guess what I pull. So, you know, bit of fun. Bit of fun. Okay. Oops. Try again. Cool. So that is where we're up to. Saving some shards. We want to spark wise. I just use quite a bit of spark. Um, is it inventory? So yeah, spark wise, we've got two and a half million now because I used it on slash. Uh, we've got a bit more in inventory as well. So we've got about three million spark saved up. Uh, we're saving our Zen as well. Again, just use it on um, on slash. So we're saving up. And then also as well, like I said, in inventory, we've also got um 84 million xp saved up so i want to try and get enough to take one bot straight to like 67 straight up to 67 that's the idea um at least one but the question is which bot do you choose for that that's the big question um but yeah can't wait for that to come. Can't wait for, le for level 67 to come. Uh, can't wait for HU18 to come. Making preparations now. Um, saving all my cores as always. So we've got all our G Metal cores. Uh, things like that. Um, and yeah. You know. Waiting for HU18. That's all we're waiting for now. You know. The game is quite stale as it is for top guys. You know. Um, you know. And um you know, it's quite too easy. I don't need anything, so why pour anything? But when that uh, HU18 drops, that that video will be a big pulling video. And um, once the five star batch drops, we're gonna be doing another obviously uh, pull live, handing out some Sunstreaker was it uh, stash crystals? So yeah. So. Before we finish the stream, let's see how many subs we have. So if we've reached that 4,000 subs, I'll be giving away some serious Sunstreak Wars of Stash Crystal. So you've got your last chance, guys. Normally, if you subscribe, it normally hits up on the screen. So has anyone subscribed since? Have we had any subscribers? Let's have a look. How many subscribers are we on? Let's have a look. Three nine six six. So we got three subs. <laughs> but that didn't work, did it? Three subs. Come on, listen, right, okay, guys, listen. Okay, I get that two hours might not be enough time. There's people that don't watch the stream live, people might watch it later. I'll give it till next week. 
if by next week's stream we can get to 4,000 subs, I'll give away 15 Sunstreak Water Crystals live next week. Is that fair? Is that fair? Yeah, I think that's fair. So, yeah. 15 Sunstreak Water Crystals next week if, if we can get to 4,000 subs by next week. But, yeah. But, in the meantime, you know what I'm going to do? Because we haven't given it away... I'm going to give a few random uh, Sushi Quarters Sash Crystals out. I'm going to give one to Bricks Motion. Bricks Motion has been really, uh, you know, been in the chat quite a bit. I'm going to give one to Stay Puffed, just being a platinum member. So thank you to Stay Puffed as well. Um, um, I'm also going to give one to JP for a simple reason that he doesn't like crystal videos, but he likes me. So we'll give him a, a code. I'm going to give a one to Lancer, my good friend from my alliance. And who else will I give one to? And we'll give one to MD Prime as well. Why not? Just some random people picked out. So you five, you hit me up on Discord. I'll give you some support slash crystal. But listen, share the news, guys. If you get to 4,000 subs next week live, I will give away 15 Sun Streaker was a stash crystals. If we get to 4,000 subs. If, if, right, well, thanks for watching, guys. Really appreciate it. Like I said, a bit of an action packed stream. So, we covered obviously news that's normal. We covered the missions, we covered ability 11 for all the new bots, we covered uh, world and sea phantom, and obviously looked at the possible new five star bots coming to the game. So, yeah, action packed. So, yeah, don't forget, guys, hit that subscribe button regards to the 4,000. Don't forget to hit like on the video before you leave. If you'd like anything in the stream. And don't forget, I post regular content. We break these streams down into smaller videos. So if one of your friends wants to watch something in there, but you think it's an hour and a half long, it's quite a long stream, we cut it down for people so they can catch up the important information and go and watch it, you know, a bit shorter rather than watching a whole hour and a half. So appreciate everyone for watching. Thanks for tuning in. Join me next week for next week's stream. Thanks for watching as always, guys, and peace out, guys.